playing against 100 Thieves to qualify for champions. Last time we played them was in stage one grand finals and they beat us 3-0, so it kind of stung. G2 has improved a lot over the past three months. I think we're really confident against them. We know what, how they like to play. We always look a lot better whenever pressure's on us. Pressure's there, we play better, we calm better, we do things better. We just like put in 130%. Good Thieves to start tempoing up towards the seaside and the hat's gonna get a lot of information to get assistance. Have a good read on them overall. So watch a lot of their VODs, just like prepping for the three series that we played and they have done the same. It's gonna be a tough game. 100 Thieves beat us when we were at some of our lows. Previous results don't really shake me or my team. No matter what, they are a great opponent. We have to step up in that day in order to win, regardless. Huge mistakes here for G2. They're burning the clock down now. And they're starting to hold the torch to the feet of Crew. But MTA sprays him down. It's all for Jonah to do. He doesn't have any flashes left. But he's able to take a one versus one. Catch it over the inch. And now the rolling thunder. It's going to catch him today. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to hide. You're on Jonah P's wild ride, baby. This time around, I'm looking to get my revenge. Valen, I hope that he gets to see us make champs and I don't know what he's going to be doing, wallowing in his sorrows. <laughs>
So I see obviously got thrown into the deep end when he signed with this team. But in, in recent weeks, we've really started to see him make some big plays. Now, the question is, system duelist or potential superstar in the making? I mean, if he could be a little bit of both, then I think that just takes G2 over the top as a team. And in this game against Sen, he diffed Zekin. There's yeah. no way of saying it other than that. It's just the plain, simple fact. I, I, the truth is, when I look at 100 Thieves, if this guy is performing well, 100 Thieves, or at G2, rather, uh, if Icy is performing well, this team can be up there with the best teams in Americas. If Icy is playing elite, this team is the best team in Americas. Okay. I think that is what we've actually seen the last couple of times they've gone out there on the stage, is an Icy that is performing at the absolute top of his game, and that is where I start to just rate G2 incredibly highly. If he can make maintain that level of performance as he's ramped up over the course of the year, this team is elite. Because even in games where like Icy's not being that like standout performer, we're always looking to hang our hat on Valen. For and, sure. And he's calling, right? It seems like this is still a centerpiece about the narrative of G2 and something they're going to look to leverage here. And and I think that the, the reason why, like, I see, like, I've been wanting him to step up has been because, like, all the other pieces are working. But in order to be the best team in the world, you have to have an elite duelist. Yeah. He's been doing much better. And with a guy like Valen that's been sort of carrying this team all the way from Ascension last year to now, like, that is a fantastic combo piece. I 100% agree. Valen has spoken himself about how he he wants this team to be one that doesn't rely on a star player to pop off. Everyone can contribute. Everyone has their games. But as you said, and as I am in total agreement, when you have a yeah. duelist going crazy, it takes things over the top. I like how he says that, and then he just top frags in 50% <laughs> yes. of their games. Like, oh, no. 30 no. he, is on yeah. he, he is one of the best, if not the best, fragging IGLs in the world right now. I, I would go as far as to say, I think Valent is the most valuable player in all of America okay. right now. Because as you're saying, like, the best fragging IGL we have at the moment, and also just one of the best IGLs we have at the moment. Like, if you were to build a roster around any single player, Valen, I think, has to be in everyone's top three and for my money he's number one it's big words you're gonna back that up for a yeah center. no sir like no, I, obviously that's true if you're playing that game with the like five four three two one dollars building a mm -hmm. roster yeah. I, you're for I, yeah, i'm giving I'm him six dollars <laughs> yeah no i'm taking balance straight Play away. for my premier team six dollars <laughs> valen i got you so on that note you have a telestrator prepared for us here yeah let's let's talk about it a little bit because obviously we spend so much time talking about valen being this super high impact player especially the mid-round is so intricate you're going to show us Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I, they're going to pay me six dollars to do this, nice. and then Valens, and then Which Valens get the six oh, bucks. So here we go. I'll walk you through a beautiful. Great, about to say. <laughs> <laughs> I want to walk you through a beautiful round that Valen calls here up against Sentinels. And the main thing I want us to just tag into very quickly here is the ultimates that Sentinels have. They've got the Deadlock, they've got the Omen. G2 are going to be thinking about this, and they start this off with a dive over into the A main space, but be very mindful of Icy's pathing here, because it's a little different. Sentinels have been throwing the C's nade that ends up landing in the back of Rebel the last few rounds, so this time, Icy is going to double satchel in front of Rebel. You can see it right here. Double satchel right in front, so he dodges out that util, and there's a Fade Haunt that lands up there, tags out Zekin, so he gets a very easy kill up against the enemy duel. So great, great little set piece right at the start. Valen makes a good decision to call for that one and they get that kill. But from that point on, they decide to freeze. Now, why is that? You might ask. Right now, they know there is a fade and there's a deadlock on the A side of the map. That likely means that over on C, you're gonna have the Cypher and the Omen in some kind of burial. But they remember Omen has ultimate. Now, Omen with ultimate doesn't wanna fast rotate. They can actually leave two players stacked over here because if G2 are to accelerate into the site, Omen just TPs over and has a fine time. So what G2 need to do is bait out that ult as best they can. So they stay in this space right now and they throw this smoke. Now, this smoke is absolutely critical because right now G2 effectively have three options. They could go back towards C, they could split into B, or they could stick around to go into A. But with a player on stairs watching down into rubble, you see that split pivot onto B, or you could even see players rotating out. So that's why they put down that smoke and then wait inside this space. They slowly scale forward right now, and actually, you can see they pull back their killjoy turret. So right now, there are a few gaps on the map for G2. Nothing watching front B. And this turret's gonna go away, which opens up options to flank and puts G2 on a timer. So, Valen puts down the smoke to create some pressure, right? That door is broken that could send them over into B. And then they make as much pressure as possible on this A side of the map. They throw 
down this lockdown, which is gonna get instantly broken. There's an Odin on that side right there. So Saucy's going to bust that one down. But you can see how the map reacts. The Omen ult comes in. That means, whoa! That means that now there's three players over on this A side of the map. And the Cypher with no turret is accelerating over there. So Valen makes the call to again, keep baiting out this door. Wait out time, wait out time, wait out time. And eventually pivot back into the B site. They bait out the deadlock ultimate and now can very slowly walk out. The entire time, mind you, they actually called to keep that Killjoy watching onto stairs because as long as no one is looking at stairs, this pivot into B is very simple for them to go for. And as you can see, the amount of time they've given on the map, they are anticipating that flank coming in from the Cypher. They anticipate three players stacked on A and even a Fade Leer or Haunt rather is gonna tell them no one's actually playing on the stairs angle. So they're very, very diligent in their post plant too, coming back here to clear out for that lurk. It's a very simple round off of one kill where G2 completely freeze, but they're able to clear out those backs and uh, really deal with how Sentinels were uh, trying to pinch them in on that round. There you go. I mean, a great example, I think you've had G2 move into that space, then sort of cut noise for a while, right? And still try and imply yeah. a presence across the map. I, th I think it's a great example too of how slow G2 play a lot of their attack rounds, but it just maximizes opportunity for Valen to work the defending team and make the right pivot, hit yeah. the site that's open. It's so good cool because he like gives the other team time to start flanking and it opens up the B site because if there's no flank coming in, then that player is rotating into B and there's someone to hold them there. But if they're flanking and Omen's pivoting with the ultimate to go into A, no one's on that B site and they know that. There you go. That is G2 at work. Some of that okay. meticulous mid-rounding. But now it's time to get this one underway for the fourth time this year. It's another NA Slugfest. G2 Esports versus 100 Thieves for a slot at Champions. Don't go anywhere. We're jumping right in. Riot Games Arena. It's time for two North American teams to fight for a spot for history. Make some noise for G2 Summer seeking how to step in commas. If you with us, buy the bundle. Say you survive the bundle. Barely time to buy the bundle for this ton of Evans Rumble. Cause you know we Titans in this game. Ain't no contest. If we take it to the game, turn a wild west. We ain't faking what I claim. It's a wild threat. No rook, we've been a vet. Now check the mindset by the name of G2. How to take over the world, how we come. A newcomer. We've been up for and now summers. it's time to bring out their opponents. Make some noise for your stage one champions. Hundred Every time G2 have played 100 Thieves, they've been at a low. That was the reasoning, the excuse, but now there's no room for any of those. It is, of course, such an important game for both these squads. Valen's still smarting after failing to take that stage one trophy. Well, the good news is the stage two one is on the table. It's right in front of us here, and it's up for grabs. 100 Thieves too, I think, just coming off of a massive win yesterday after a pretty tough stage two, after, you know, hoisting it back during stage one, absolutely uh, dismantled Sentinels in a very methodical way. Uh, I think that after that, a lot of people are gonna be looking at this match as much closer. We got Abyss, boys. Wow, this time it's 100 Thieves pick. They floated it yesterday. <laughs> and we're never going to get it no matter what on the second. G2 actually opting to ban Ascent. Typically they ban Sunset first, but they have seen what 100 Thieves have been capable of on that map, what Cryo's been capable of. Yesterday what Bang did on the map, 31 for 13. 
outrageous, so they're getting that right out. Team seem all in to not lose map one today. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be a little nervous looking at Abyss coming in for 100 Thieves. I think 100 Thieves, especially on their first pass on a map, are so good at putting together really uh, elite, like, exec pieces, whether that's retaking or actually hitting onto a site. From speaking with Zix, he is very details-oriented. So feel like that Bind is, was like that for them? For, exactly, yeah. Bind was like that. It was a reason why it was so good, but I think for a map that is still very, very much in its infancy, 100 Thieves is a great team to watch and get inspired with what they're going to do there. I definitely think G2 have a better depth of a map pool right now, and I certainly harbor concerns for 100 Thieves on Lotus. I think what we've seen from them on that map the past couple times in Stage 2 has been fine, serviceable, but their attack side pretty one note, how they default work towards C. I think G2 should be able to expose them and take down Lotus. Yeah, I mean, I think Balance Calling was looking absolutely fire on that Lotus map, but a guy you can't underestimate on the other side, bang the best defensive player uh, in America's for my money on his Viper is so hard to break through when you're attacking into his side. I mean, he drops, what, 30 yesterday. He was just absolutely out of his mind. The winner of this match, folks, will be heading to Champion Soul, and the loser will have to fight for survival in the lower bracket tomorrow. Let's head into map one and jump on your casters. It's Vansili and Riv. Thank you so much, Uber. And indeed, Champions for Soul is in the sights for both of these two teams. And of course, there's always still a second life for the losing team, but yeah. they want to clinch this right now. A big match here, a chance for 100 Thieves to make it back into the grand stage. For a lot of these players, they haven't been onto this grand stage in Champions since 2022 or Boostio since last year. But for G2, I mean, it'll be the first time they want it. Yeah, Boostio knows how to control a team in this situation. They got to be feeling good. And hearing Boostio in previous interviews with Dryad and saying himself that they've never lost one of these against G2. Let's see what they can do. But G2 is four out of their last five wins, right? They are on a trajectory that works so well for hitting playoffs. This young team still able to stay consistent could definitely come 100 Thieves a lot harder than they're expecting here as we start off on Lotus. We just heard the desk. 100 Thieves, Lotus has not been the sharpest lately. Their previous game versus Loud did not go well. So we'll see if they can right the wrongs here in the beginning of this one and stop G2's defense. Quite a few sheriffs around, but ghosts for 100 Thieves so they can get this long range fight on A to start off as they just leave Bustio to watch C. You already see when the wall came up on his A side for the Thieves, there's some pop shots that were shot coming out here from Trent. He already does damage onto Cryo. So 100 Thieves, I'm gonna try to walk into this site wounded. Although, scaling oh. up towards the staircase, it's ready so far, though. Jonah P is just on the other end, just down. jiggling and making sure that he gets contact, but doesn't want to force the issue and force the fight. Wow. I'm just reading this play already, too. But expecting the utility first. Will it be a dry peak is the thing. 100 Thieves can play contact from here, but the space they've taken, it's almost more of an advantage to wait and see if G2 will try to re-clear. And it is just going to be that quick peak. 100 Thieves start to move towards A as the door opens, but they have the spike alone. They have to get in sight first. I see and Trent both already taken down. Jonah P on top of heaven, and he's going to have to wait out the rotate. Valen's already grouped up with left. him, but Leaf is still a little bit too far ahead. Plant going in for the tree, and all players of 100 Thieves are playing inside that site. So they really want to smother right now, something that 100 Thieves have been good with. Going for immediate trades. But Jonah P is able to answer first on the attempt of a retake for G2. There's the flight from behind from Leaf. Headshot onto Cryo as we even it up on the three versus three. But 100 Thieves are still holding out towards the site as they all fall down in the end for G2. And that's a strong hold for 100 Thieves to start off the series. Great job by 100 Thieves. You see them all just like stop dead in the middle of that. The fist bumps come out immediately as they take A, they hit the site, plant down, and it was a it was a very patient round too. They were waiting out that time towards Rubble to see if G2 would get any rotations on. And we had Boosty on the left side of the map to start. So it came down to hitting the shots and teamwork in the site. Doesn't tell us too much about these rounds other than 100 Thieves is ready to play patient so far especially since they had the Ghost and the Sheriff. Usually you stay back for the shots, but they were creeping up as much as they could. Oh my gosh, creeping up here is G2 though, right in the smoke. Thing is, there's not gonna be a flash really, so it's a haunt to throw up. Satchel's up towards the air, but there's a lot of players from under Thieves on the other side. This should be easy pickings for now, but the Paint Shells does do damage on the defensive side. Continues to trade as Boosio moves forward and finally gives a tally any advantage for the Thieves. G2 trying to push through and surprise the attack side. 
But it seems like 100 Thieves, once again, Damn. just ready on these type of calls that G2 is trying to do on their yeah. Ecos. Bustio stack in the lockdown already. Asuna, three points on the ult. They're just waiting for this push from Leaf to be the last one. A 3k, the hat trick from Bustio on that. Just four away from the lockdown here to start. Don't and we'll see if we do get this buy next round. And us. yeah, instantly buy into the low armor on the bonus. See this push once again. G2 just trying to get a little active. I mean, to think if 100 Thieves isn't here and they go for the same A strat, that might be a lot of timing for G2. But Bustio reads that there might be some trickery on the map. And there's always good things coming out from 100 Thieves. You look at the pistol round, it was great utility to take down Icy in the back of the A site. That previous round, just one Boombot forced G2's hand yeah. to fight. And this time around, they want to do it. And here's the play here that Ender was mentioned before. This time it's Asuna doing it though, on the side of the Thieves. Satcheling forward, heavily damaged, but also able to push away G2. Conceding now control of the A side. There's only now Trent holding the tree. But once again, 100 Thieves seems to be playing a G2 style. Mm -hmm. Very slow and methodical of taking the rubble control and just want to wait it out to maybe try to punish any type of over-aggression, over-peaking that could come out from G2 towards the end. But both of these teams are really just trying to play off the first mistakes. G2 so far behind. They have that alarm bot mid yeah, already yeah. for Leafs push last round just to make sure that area can't be prioritized by G2 to start. And they're going to do a little bit of a fake here with EU. Quick Prowler into sight as they're still encroaching on to A. G2, very tempered on their movement. They haven't seen anything that really makes them worry, so why exactly. are they running off their first positions? Great defensive control so far, and it should be a solid retake once the plant goes down. Because the alarm but also didn't go up towards that C side, so no early rotates came out from G2. That yeah. was actually a good play to keep them in the C side, weaken up the A side, where once again, 100 Thieves are going to go for a five-man hit. G2 staying on top of heaven though, but Trent Ooh. still manages to get a spray and take down Bang, and that's a spike down with 15 seconds left. 2 HP once again on this Asuna, trying to get the plant down, trying to build up the showstopper here. As it gets the plant down, Hawk being thrown on the defensive side, and Trent continues to open up from the top of heaven, giving an opening for G2 to be able to move inside the site. Try doing whatever he could, but it's only for a one kill. Yeah. And that's... Great plays from G2, but off heroic plays from Trent at the start. What was that? Triple from Trent, double yep. from Leaf. Easy clean up there towards the A side. Not even that much of a low buy. I think there was the, the outlaw, maybe low armor, but G2 had low armor too. They fought right through it. And again, very patient on the defense. Valen is not pulling anybody off their sight. Very confident in the way they're playing these here. And they, they've collapsed onto the A site pretty well, even on the pistol round. It was just 100 Ds hitting their shots. So the protocols here from G2 are looking pretty solid. Just looking at Bang. Making a low buy in here, made completely safe for himself. And they're gonna head towards C with a little bit of a watch towards mid this time. I wonder if 100 Ds play this fast with Asuna. They, it seemed like they actually played really fast. Obviously, when they had the double duelist on Haven yesterday, it was a different kind of thieves that they, they kind of added a little bit of gusto to the mix. And here, back to more of the default base comp that we get for maps and the mirror comp of this as well. Do they slow down? Do they go back to not using Asuna as much? Or do they actually put him back on that pedestal and try and get him going? Yeah. As you can see at the bottom here, a little bit of a tech pause, trying to fix the audio issues here. Probably coming in from Bang because he hasn't went, hasn't gone rather for a buy yet. But it gives us a chance at least to talk about this matchup between G2 and the Thieves. Yeah. Yesterday when the Thieves plays against, played against Sentinels, what we'd actually praise the Thieves for doing is not only being good on a buddy system for trades, but also not being afraid to push out towards the spawn and fight against the Sentinels. But on the side of G2, they're also a very nice protocol a team that also yeah. plays for a buddy system, a trade system. No superstar is really that shines for you know a one carry everybody hop into your backpack they're very methodical of how they want to work the yeah. map and and retake at least on the defensive side which is why i like to see so far for g2 they're not really being too antsy trying to fight back against 100 thieves inside the site right. just waiting for everybody to group up and move in as a group just an idea on a save round that or the second round that they had pushing out a c why not you want to attempt something you gotta throw something in the mix. As we said, the history between these teams is in favor of 100 Thieves fully every time they've met. If we think back to the stage one playoffs, it was what well, the upper finals yeah. where 100 Thieves was able to take down G2. And then you get two days later, the grand finals where 100 Thieves again face G2, but they get the 3-0. 
And the guy on your screen right there, Bang, was a huge factor in that final series. Plus 20 or something, plus for the series. And yeah, he has been in playoff form already. Yeah. So getting his audio going is definitely going to help with these once again. But there's there's so much to unpack in this game still. We're only on round four here. And I don't even think these teams have really <laughs> tempted each other with, with fakes, with even conditioning. Yeah. You yeah, haven't had a chance yet, really, right? Yeah, into that ego that you saw from G2. They're just trying to press forward. But there's no really any type of, like, keeping one behind. They're just really inserted into a five-player death ball, at least towards the A site. 400 these in these moments that they had rifles to work with. But at least now when you're looking back here at that history you're talking about, yes, it's three times that they've met before. This is the first time, uh, the fourth time rather. Yeah. But during that stage one, there's only one map that was won by G2 versus 100 Thieves. Right. And now you're talking about playoff form. When it comes down to playoffs, 100 Thieves are always there to play. But you look at how deep both of these teams went through in Shanghai, G2 looked night and day. There were a team that were able to yeah. play the comebacks. They were always criticized also being a team that kind of like shuts down and crumbles when they're falling by behind by so much during that stage one. But remember those big comeback plays that they played against Heretics, for example. 11-2, yeah. uh, like they were falling behind 11-2 and came back in a 13-11 victory. And then that kind of like initiated a spark where they could play the long distance, they could play the long game, and they could play confidently despite how many rounds they're falling behind. And then coming back into Americas, it kind of feels like a, a playground for them. Like Icy's been popping off ever since Shanghai. Yeah, we're finally getting the quote scrim ice. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the confidence in the building. But it's true. And we were talking about their trajectory heading into playoffs and the fact that you see G2 Esports again winning the last four out of five in big big ups to Trent there and being able to frag and Icy and Jonah P. I think Ice or um, Trent and Jonah P in the last series uh, respectively is like plus 17 plus 15 right on this on the series and those guys have been absolutely fragging so to get the duelist as well in the mix that everybody has been looking for from IAC here to finally get on the scene yeah the limelight's been shining on them a bit these past few series well at least now as we're having fun here changing the sound issues and fix the sound tech issues pause. Right, we have the tech pause oh. yeah, the PAWS. so make sure you send we us got, little tweets about your pets on. so we can throw uh, show them here on the screen and looks like ribs are already going to show some i am some i'm mode. opening <laughs> my app right now you can't add an eye i'm asked for pets and i get a pet get out of here uh <laughs> which one do i choose and while you're looking, at least, to, to continue along these storylines, you just talked about these duelists that, you know, G2 was looking for, <laughs> Icy is able to step up a bit. But even when you're looking on the camp of 100 Thieves, even from how they were playing yesterday, the two duelists that you do usually have, depending on the maps here, Cryocells and Asuna, they've been popping off here going into Stage 2. Also, combining the results they had from the games against Sentinels yesterday, the, the conversion that they have for percentage of first bloods is quite high for both of those players. High 60s, even se over 70% for cryo so when it, you need some players to really step up to the plate on 100 thesis side if it's not bang as a controller to anchor the sites the people trying to make the entries trying to open up the sites and trying to open up the duels here for the thieves are definitely here in the sites for cryo and asana so i tweeted but i failed the assignment i think because <laughs> i didn't even i put vct americas but i didn't put tech pause because yeah i was definitely yeah. losing my train of thought because i'm just looking at all of these cute pets my cat's face <laughs> Yeah, it's about the tech pause. Let's get it up there. Yeah. Um, let's see what we got. Also, free Lee's, the pets. Lee's haircut looking fly. Yeah. Yeah. Turning over a new leaf, <laughs> if you will. And so are we right now in the round. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> round number four now resumes. And then the first blood from Valen right through the one way smoke on the seaside as Asuna falls. And we just talked about the duels and the opening frags that's been, I think, at 64% for Asuna. That number's gonna go down now as he just Come lost that fight out. to Valen on a C site. Over towards C, first a little bit of aggression here on Rubble too as they're kind of staying confident on holding that area. If 100 Thieves leave, they have to do something to retake Rubble and at least pressure G2. Doesn't look like that's even the idea though. Valen's in sight. It looks like he's in sight to stay for this fight too. This could get messy. Exactly. This is big because off snow falls. There's no pain shells that can break the utility from the Nano Swarm oh, over. Oh. So it should still make it difficult right now for 100 of these to make it through, especially now that the poison orb came up here on the defensive side. Although Valen didn't get damaged by a bit of utility from yeah. 100 of these. If only 100 thieves knew what they were, what chaos they'd actually caused in the site. But simple smokes 
G2 again, staying patient. Valen calls, no, nothing's happening. Back to your spots. They've even kind of anchored back into sight here, right? If you're trying to hold 30 rubble seconds left. at 30 seconds left in the round and you die, they're going to run right in. So you see A backing up as C is the final hit, though. The commitment there in Strona P anchoring towards that oh, site. God. The two of them fall. The back step on the cryo. No help coming out as his teammates are falling down on the attack sign. And EU now with 13 seconds left. Nothing he could do. Potentially here for 100 left. Thieves was still trying to find and probe some information outside of the map. And EU has no chance now to move in for a plan. Still wants to anchor down for a fight. And it's Leaf that's going to take it. 2-2. Two, two. Incredibly confident defending here from G2 Esports. How can 100 Thieves make him sweat is the question. Probably not on this next eco round. But getting that, Jonah P doing a hell of a job anchoring the backside of C here. So there's a quick distraction even on that last kill for Bang. And this is quick and clean so far for these few gun rounds. Now to Sheriffs for a side 100 Thieves. Let's see what they can put to the mix. Still haven't lurked mid yet. See Boosty will kind of get her on the map and start setting a few precedents in giving G2 something to think about. But right now, G2's only had to deal with what they're seeing. There's no real fake outs yet. You got to consider that's pretty easy to play against for them. Orb collection, Bustio very close now to alt along with Asuna here. That's the thing, they're not giving it to Asuna at this point, so they're going to want to play the long game. In the next round, potentially, right. if both Bustio and Asuna fall, that is a lockdown. And a showstopper ready on the attack side for 100 Thieves to maybe potentially turn it around. But so far, you're looking at the economy. This is an eco coming out from the Thieves and an opportunity for G2 to take the, the lead in this first map. Great macro here to retake oh. Rubble. Continue to pressure at one minute. And make sure 100 Thieves is not gaining too much space. Super smart play. Yeah, Pain Shell is going to split them a bit, but the weapons are still too good for G2. They still pull up over here. With the advantage by that one player. But Jonah P will have to fall back towards that A site. Weapons will then be picked up by 100 Thieves. So two Vandals now in their hands for Bang and Cryo. There's already really a crossfire setup. Getting ready with left. potentially the door opening and then the door breaking here towards Hobbit. Leaf is just waiting inside of this smoke. There's that double swing out. But there's always still that second support on the side of G2. They pull into the lead. Losing quite a few guns there, but the money looks great on the side of G2, so they're not going to worry too much about it. Four ultimates now for 100 Thieves. You have to think if they're going to stop the momentum, this this is going to be the round. There's really no reason they don't get through this. Unless G2 can come up with the first bloods, unless they can quickly strike again like Valen just did to start off that last round. 100 Thieves are going to go ahead, hit the big timeout button. As they want, Six wants to get in their minds real quick with just the adjustments here. It does look a little lackluster from 100 Thieves, especially with the way they were playing yesterday, starting off slow. Yeah, but overall, this is a definitely important timeout to take things off here, especially on the attack side for 100 Thieves. I, yeah. I believe that both of these teams are very confident on their defensive side. If you're looking at the stats of how sure. the defensive round wins have been for both of these teams, both G2 and 100 Thieves are neck and neck tied just under Leviathan on the Let's amount of successes go, that they have on the defensive side. So they're leading right now the Americas in that, and they want to make sure that you can capitalize on that third, fourth, or fifth round to yeah. sit comfortably in the second half. And right after the timeout on that scoreboard, we do get Icy bringing out the off. So it's going to try to shut down whatever Zix just started the plan for the team. The kill came from Valen on C last time, so they may be expecting to fight a rifle here if they go for a quick peek. I don't know. Icy's going to be looking with an operator, and they may find a lot more than they were looking for on the side of 100 Thieves. Looks like we'll get a little bit of a flank from Bang, though. Shadows traveling. Just trying to make sure that on the A side, he hears the audios and see if there's any pressure yeah. coming out on the A side. And no utility is being used, but yet, 100 Thieves still want to commit. They open up the seaside for now, and there's no support. Icy couldn't answer back with the operator, but we're still trying to anchor it down towards the seaside. Aiming it down, there's that lurk coming out from that B side. Bang going head to head against Trent. Prowler to push him away, but not swinging out on that. And the door opening realizes that it's being pushed. He falls back. Locked down now, set down towards the seaside, forcing Icy to give up his position towards C. And should be now an open site for 100 Thieves to plant. 
Easy hit there. What are we looking at? Haunt's not up. They do have a Prowler to come in with a Seize. Roomba can clear. Paranoia. So decent retake here for G2, but that's a lot of members. 100 Thieves ready for it. Trent has a Nightfall available and is still trying to wait it out. Potentially just waiting on the timing of the smokes and maybe even counter back on the Nightfall. Thrown on the attack side by EU. Offshot missed though by Icy. Difficult to retain now with this operator. And he's hoping to land one, but it's EU going for that wide swing. A double swing out from Athese to give the advantage and forcing now G2 to fall back and also losing the operator in the yep. process. The beginning of this round, that peak at Long C is exactly what we saw yesterday from 100 Thieves. The, the, they come out into a situation where they're, they're in a crossfire from G2, but somehow 100 Thieves snap to the heads of G2 in the corner on Jonah P, and they take down another peaker from Long C. Just the speed at which they can adapt to the situation that their opponents put on them is incredible. Yeah, and they open up that they open up the main portion of defense for G2 that round in in, in a moment. That's exactly how Hundred D started to pace themselves yesterday and get a lot of momentum going. Now Bustio with the operator. Yeah, they're gonna switch that big rifle over and see what they can do with it on the side of the attack. Now ultimate for Asuna, three alts for G2 side here. Yeah, and picking that up. Left behind from the body of Icy, and I wonder if that's going to slow down the tempo, though, of 100 Thieves, because they have this operator to work with. All of them, once again, grouped up on a default. Sea site control, potentially orb as well. Making a lot of noise in the process, and it seems as though G2 thought it was going to be an easy orb to get picked up on the east side, but it gets punished right away by Bang. That's been free space for, for G2, right? Maybe they get a little lax trying to push that, since they've just gained rubble, held the space, and backed up when they want, but yeah. Bang playing a little sneaky sneak there on the platform, gets the first frag of the round, and that's going to be on Icy. Still working over towards C. We have not seen B yet. Just imagine, this is still something 100 Thieves can throw into the mix, because G2 think it's it, it's going to be open. It's going to be open. We don't have to defend it. Might, Might finish there now. Hard. There. Might finish there now, because the turret also brought out the pit, so that's C site on lock. 100 Thieves trying to pivot back towards the A-side. Paranoia to push them away. 36 seconds left on the clock. There's the showstopper going out from Asuna, trying to take control towards Rubble. Players are falling down towards that Rubble side, but Valen not before he takes down Bang in the process. Three also still available on the defensive side for G2 for the retake. Ooh. Leaf almost got caught, or almost caught one, rather. He's trying to cross inside this A-side. Ultimate coming down. That's gonna have to move the operator out of tree too. This is actually a sticky situation here for 100 Thieves and G2 keep an eye on that doorway. Trying to TP with the timing too. Actually sticks it. There's the push towards that spawn. They all fall. Oh my. Oh my. What an edit. Well, they adapted so well on the side of G2 to there to lose Icy. And then Valen calls everyone back, basically, into a safer position so they can get the retake, knowing Leaf was going to be able to get all on that round to use it. Yeah, really, really forward thinking there from the side of G2 after losing a member. Being able to defend quite a bit here at A and just whittle away at the numbers enough. But yeah, the lockdown to seal the deal so nicely. So a lot, of you, a lot of alts there used by G2, but they get the Operator back, they get the round, and they switch it back to themselves. It's exactly what they wanted. Causes a lot of spending on the side of 100 Thieves. You can see very low credits for them now. Ooh, Asuna looking to get activated now. That's exactly what we've been thinking for 100 Thieves to get this momentum in their favor. Trent falling back at the same time. Just trying to see if there's more utility being thrown. Outside when the door closes now confirms that nobody committed behind this door that was opened up by the thieves So nobody really fully reacting off of G2 just making sure that the pressure points are being looked after though door hasn't been broken yet Oh, oh a jump spot there by Busio that sees that leaf was there with the off <laughs> just blinked for a moment Feels like he wants to go again though And that would be in great Busio fashion. It, it would and you you're kind of keeping the operator there, right? And he tried it out. The drop smoke to allow Busio to swing out. But couldn't get the kill, and that's going to force now 100 Thieves to just try to execute towards this A site. 
There's that showstopper this time on the defensive side as the door opens up for a second time. PB door now open. Jonah B just waiting around the corner. Showstopper denied though by Austin on the other side and we tied up the situation for the round. 33 seconds left but the spike is down and covered by Jonah B. Just inside Hobbit and Busio's trying to lurk up. A battle towards the A side won by Trent and Busio once again cannot capitalize and surprise an opponent on a rotate. 20 seconds left. <laughs> At least punishes him towards the end, but Jonah P still holds his ground. Moving forward with the knife out. He flies away just like the wand. And Jonah P is allowing G2 to get the round up to five. What I, I think what we're seeing is it looks like 100 Thieves just does not have an answer right now to this slow, methodical defense, the movement of G2 Esports. They're not giving up the information of their positions before anything happens. So Bustio can infer that, okay, a lot of the initiated utilities over here, we can push through the Killjoy utility and be on site because that's all they have. Like, they cannot get any of that right now. And they got to figure out a way to make G2 sweat here. Pressuring one site is just not working. They are going to go for the 4-1 again. <laughs> Leaf a great already buy. starts them off. Great buy by Leaf to go with the Outlaw. Understanding economy is so low. Far. Now that dwindles down to numbers. <laughs> you saw the alarm by chasing after Busio running in. The Outlaw comes back out and a second connects with the wall bank. Busio falls, but the site is open and there's an opportunity for the Thieves to plant. And that will allow a little bit of economy to move into the next round. G2's are okay to give that up. Take that 300 credits, we don't care. We just want the rounds. Poison's off. Slowly, look, everybody's watching the same spot. This, this is gonna be a tough defense here. Leaf already takes one out. I'm just gonna keep on raining it forward here with the outlaw. Now I is the one pushing forward, but Bang is there with two kills. A third one right in the face of Leaf. But Trent finally moves in for the trade. Thankfully, My there's word. good economy for G2, but Bang was almost about to step up to the plate just like yesterday. Yeah, having one of his best games yesterday and still showing a bit of that prowess today, but still G2's round six to three. Just methodical on the way they are taking out 100 Thieves. They don't look pressured even on the retakes. It's minimal util that they're using too. They're using it correctly. That one piece gets such an advantage and they can move off maybe the next paranoia after the haunt comes in. Just one after the other, the one-two punch. All right, three in a row. It seems to be what they can collect before 100 Thieves stops and gets one. Yeah, definitely. If you're looking at the pattern of that timeline. Yeah. Trent with the Odin now ringing out from A. So that's already going to put a pause on any pushing out towards that side of the map. And it's C. Again, that's all 100 Thieves can see, apparently. They go for this orb, and they know that's been free. But what are they doing with it that, that has been able to get through G2? Won't be able to see too much into C because of this pit coming through, and it yeah. seems like it's, what, after three rounds, Juno P has another pit? There's something about these controllers right now in the playoffs are just stepping up and owning so far. But that definitely is going to push 100 Thieves back towards this A sign. But a late lurk from Bustio, so you're really trying to have him walk inside. But the difference is, is the alarm bot is really covering this entrance. A late lurk maybe was going to get instantly denied. So 100 Thieves once again has to focus on this A side. Back towards the right. Trent's ready with the Odin. If they start getting some detection, they have a paranoia in the back of the site to pause. But this protection and tree could absolutely shut them, shut down 100 Thieves when they open the door. There's the alarm bot. Gets broken. Busio walks away, Jeez. and Trent, meanwhile, though, does get the Odin spray onto EU as left. the door has opened on the eighth side. And there's that lead lurk. It is punished by Jonah P. You can't cross, you can't sneak through him right now. Haunt spots there. the last three players of 100 Thieves over towards the A side. There's not too much time left. They have to commit now towards the tree. Paranoid and now pushes straight away. But it's a one for one. Spike G2 still with the upper hand. Left. And this might be it for the call. Spike is already down, and the last two players just trying to survive. One towards the tree. Door opens up as Prowl's about to get flanked. Snake bite doesn't allow for him to get out. And losing his weapon will be huge, but he's going to be able to save it for now. And there's that swing out, and finally Leaf is going to be able to take him down. And that's going to put a lot of pressure in the economy for 100 Thieves moving into this round. Wow. Jonah P 16 and 3. Like we said in the most recent series for G2, he has been hopping off. Still getting more frags here to help the team out. And G2 just seems to have an answer for everything right now. 
attacks will be towards the, the, the fakes that it, the hundred thieves are trying to run or or aren't really even fakes they're still checking sites when they haven't got like that one they didn't really even push in all the way to a they had started some action today and then they start to push into c and that pit already makes you walk in so you what 50 percent or 50 percent of your health is gone before you even reach that alarm bot then you alarm bot and you're getting taken out by the viper that's still there so what do they do is the question it needs to come down to finding some of these 1v1s. They have to find some opening frags. That or death ball into a site. Because they're with everybody up on the side of G2, 100 Thieves cannot crack the defense. And if yeah. they do, the retake is almost impossible for them to hold because they lose a few on entering the site. So it's got to change. They're just playing basic strats right now, and that they cannot be doing that. And on top of that, when you have a player like Jonah P, as you mentioned before, just on fire, it's kind of a similar story to 100 Thieves yesterday. When yeah. you have somebody like Bang that's popping off, everything's going to work out pretty much for the rest. However you want to work the map, it's going to yeah. work into your favor. And where Bustio said that he felt that his calls were immaculate versus Sentinels yesterday. It seems to be suffering yeah, a bit this read. time around, which forces out this second time out. Once again, 100 Thieves convinced that their defensive side is good. They want to salvage these last two rounds of the first half. 7-5. Definitely a score that would work for a defensive side. And it's just, I don't feel like it doesn't tell the story of this half two with how much control G2 has had, but 100 Thieves in the early pistols, they definitely get the work done. Here we are into C now. They do focus the left side of the site. They keep that death ball going. And this is the first time G2's been playing around the door. This could actually catch the back of 100 Thieves at the right moment. They're going to be aware of this, especially with the turret down, and nobody's watching that flank anymore. Nothing watching the flank, and yeah, not even alert not. towards the east side. So, wow. Mike seems once again to come middle play Mark towards you. the east side. Still, you totally available for G2, and we open up with a showstopper for Asuna. Satchel's missing, it's trying to clear out the site. No shots inside the smoke. We're currently at Odin is inside of that! Spike planted. Sacrifices himself to open up the site, though. Trent has fallen down, pit coming out for 100 Thieves. Plant has also been put oh, down for the run. side of 100 Thieves, and there's a lockdown to try to run down that timer. Icy's one away from alt. Can't find the kills yet. There's that juggle coming out from Leaf. And that will have to forfeit potentially until this Boost fight down. comes through, and Busio winning that fight was important for them to convert this round. You already see Leaf being detained for a bit. You talked about the showstopper. He gets the kill onto that one. Not yet wanting to pop it up, though. Waiting for like Leaf to move up with him. But time is of the essence. It might be it. They might just want to decide to save. Especially with these kills coming through. It's only going to work on the economy. Oh no matter gosh. what, the round's going to be in favor of 100 Thieves. Oh, oh, oh. Little Singe Last on the heels of Bang as he gets out with a few more kills. Pit's going to be down on that right. Looks like it was up again, but no. Down for that play because he used it. A lot of alts getting thrown in there. A lot of alts being built up again. You still have Nightfall for EU as we rewatch this play. A little one and one. Not much you can do about that situation. I'd be shrugging my shoulders as well, though, because yeah. you're looking at these positions that G2 had when they were trying to retake towards the seaside. There was one of those opportunities where they had a nightfall available to flood back behind it. This time, Icy with the kill with the showstopper. They don't want to initiate it either, so they've been playing very cautiously within these retakes for G2 and almost playing too cautiously and forces them to lose these rounds. See again? Maybe. This has actually been crazy how 100 Thieves has directed themselves just to the C or A site. The one time they went B, they get taken down. And we'll see if they can focus it again. Icy looking for the ultimate back here in the columns. On oh, the forward! Bootsio! Goes with the boop! And that's the showstopper denied! Believe it or not, the best way to dodge a raise all like that is to jump at the raise at that close of a distance. Here, though. Well, down, though, there's that swing out from Valen. Ties up the situation for round number 12. So, yes, a nice little highlight play from Bustio. But the action still continues and goes in favor of G2 as Jonah P picks up Asuna, trying to play inside the Nanos. And that's going to be the lockdown out from Leaf to push away 100 Thieves uh, away from the C site slowly backing away. They know this is going to reset it on both sides, so both teams take a breath. Left. 30 seconds now. This positioning here by EU could find one. Just a shoulder! Chatting trying off guard was trying to find some utility information. Or throw utility to find information. Nightfall also confirms that the A site is clear, but they don't know. 
that there's somebody else. Oh, now they do. Especially with that Prowler being thrown by EU. A fight towards oh. it is won, won by Bustio. Valley oh, oh, the IGL Fryer once again. And it's up to the other IGL of the Thieves on a one versus two. Three HP left, wounded from the fight by Leaf. The KJ did. Oh my god! The IGL did. The Red Bull Clutch for Bustio to get the Thieves left rounds. Switching he sides. stands up to look down from his tower after the clutch. Absolutely incredible. Those were the rounds that were missing in the beginning, where we saw 100 Thieves falling in those 1v1s, and that's what we said after the timeout, is they needed to start winning the individual fights, and all the mind games jump at the raise. It's gonna take a bit, but that's what you need to do that close. Super stellar play here in the last few rounds, Mark Thieves. Lead by example is the IGL boost to here for the Thieves, also able to salvage the last round, keeping this, this game close between G2. And the crowd's up on their feet behind that. Not the G2 fans, though. But the action will definitely resume after this break. Last time, maybe the grand finals wasn't that close. You know, they, we got beat down pretty hard, which was kind of a tough pill to swallow, but we were we were there in the grand finals. We got second place um, and it felt kind of sad, you know, to see another team beat you down like that and then lift the trophy in front of you. It, it sucks, but it, it was just motivation to go into Shanghai and do better than them. Hopefully this time around, I'll be the ones lifting the trophy. And definitely, at least when you look out the goals that Valen has set to want to be better towards the Shanghai run, it did happen. Uh, back now into the Americas in a head-to-head -head between these two teams. It still looks like there's a lot of fights still for 100 Thieves as they now take this defensive sign, although no more timeouts on the side of the Thieves. It's a, it's amazing. Uh, it's just how Valen at that age as well, being so young, can take, the, take on the pressure of the international play, IGLing, you know, being that confident in, in what he does and fragging and like it's such a package in that player at such a young age and is only going to grow to get better here on the other side boostio 2 completely different type of igl but also con continuing to grow and we see all these players nowhere near their ceiling right now which makes it so incredible all right back into the match seven five hundred thieves were able to bring it back just the last few rounds there on the first half to stave off what would have been a pretty terrible scoreline. And we are back onto the map. Piper wall towards the right side to continuously play with it. Wall across B as we would expect. And we get a big B hit from G2 to start off. Icy's in the sight. Already opening up. And that's a Han that's not gonna get any information. Pain Shell so does land. He tries to land it for a second kill. Valen's out there for the trade. And it's in favor of G2 so far. Last Bang though, standing. last player standing. One versus two. Bang Spike pistol. is down out in the open, but Leaf moves out with the air. And no chance here for Bang to go for the clutch. And G2 get the pistol. That's like big. Us. One of the oh, things yesterday us? for their match uh, versus Sentinels, Sentinels was that 100 Thieves was getting the pistols. They were able to capitalize on a handful of rounds after, and it really started to hurt their opponent. So G2 here. Doing a very nice job to start off. Jonah P is going to go ahead and use a bit of that cash to grab himself a guardian. And it was really good job by G2 to continue, uh, continuously do some scaling into the site. If you're going to get in that fast with uh, Icy getting a kill, you just keep moving on through. A little bit of a play towards A. 
basic defense to take the space here as 100 Ds keep it quiet. There's a few sheriffs across, uh, across to get some damage done though and see if they can take out armor. And this is where we're gonna have to see if G2 can start to read what Bustio wants to do on the Color miss. It's gonna get cleared though. Trent's still gonna get that frag and they wanted to play the full screen. Stinger gets all of these and could have been dangerous yeah. if that tree wasn't cleared, but it's looking pretty good now for G2 to convert the anti-ego. Them. Man, look at how safe they're being. I mean, you have to be, but I was going to say, look how safe they're being, even with so much control on the yeah. site. You're still going to have a rat hanging out Ready. somewhere. There it is. Oh. Oh. That's Leaf with the Lurk in the back of the B site. Now realizes in here is Cryo running away, <laughs> and that's a long range singer out from Icy. Building up the old orbs as well on both the Rays and Trent halfway through his Nightfall as G2 now moves into their bonus round against Hunter Thieves' gun round. Man, it seems like a controller sentinels game today. The raises going in are just being used as cannon fodder right now, so it is up to the rest of the team behind them. Even though providing that util to take space makes it difficult to keep the pressure on if you don't have your duelist. So these teams are being tested. All right, this is going to be a clash here today. We're going to get both teams going in. TP up by Valen real quick. They're going to be able to hide behind the wall. And it's a defensive haunt that gets information now on yeah. pressure towards the A side. Prowler is also confirming contact. A TP across. It's spotted though by Valen. Although Prowler gets a big a swing up coming out, but it's Jonah B. That still is a kill away from Asuna. Or onto Asuna from Valen. And that's G2 now, full control of Rubble. And EU forced to watch his back, yeah. anticipating this lurk coming out from Leaf. And even moments like this, I feel like we, we failed to see from 100 Thieves on the first half here. G2 getting that pressure in. You saw already leaving C, rotation over from Bustio because they have to recover the map and start to cover each other's positions and, and their six. And now G2 have that upper hand again. Leaf with the outlaw hitting pretty true across this series so, or across the map so far. And looks like they'll go ahead for a re-hit on A as they just get Leaf info across the map. Leaf's position is still pretty good. Turret's going to watch and yep. take care of any pushes coming out towards the C sign. And if they go for quick rotates from C, he's going to be able to hear the footsteps. Jeez. Especially now that Jonah P gets that pick onto EU. 30 seconds left. It seems T2 wants to pivot back towards his B site for a plan. Yeah. Smart play. Uh, you have two left. Very Oof. unlikely that they're going to be trying to hide in B or give themselves away with a spam through these smokes. A quick peek to see if a planter may be. No, just a shoulder of Bustio. With this Phantom, though, Bang feels confident to want to try to pressure down. at least an initial fight. Well, he's got another idea where someone is. Especially when he heard the outlaw into B main at the very beginning. Nice. The lasers are still pretty good. Now for G2 on the pulse plan. Orbs up. Nano swarm down. The push from Bang. And waited by Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, the economy is going to be broken 400 Thieves. And they have no way to reset the conversation with the coach. As they have no timeouts now. The worry from the analyst desk is warranted for Lotus. It does seem like 100 Thieves can't get the strats that we usually see from them that are so aggressive. And that's credit to G2. Such a solid defense right now. Vanity is controlling where they need to be and getting the information that allows them to not move mm -hmm. on these situations where 100 Thieves is trying to throw a soft fake. All right. G2 now trying to throw their own fakes is there on the attack side here for the second half. And Leaf starts off on bank right away for this 100 Thieves low buy. So G2 feel confident to start moving up. Just trying to use your heavy hitters here with Bang and Cryo with the Sheriffs to try to get some sort of pick. Once again, one smoke isolating them. No chance to go for any opportunities to even up the tally. Careful. Careful. Quiet. Like G2 must feel good about this right now, knowing they can wait for their utility to come back up, check corners, and even before that, maybe get a peek. And there it is. They get a little util knowing EU's on the right side, so more than likely, someone's going to be hiding in sight with them. Ryo still winning that fight against IC. There's a trade coming through from G2. Now they swarm inside the site. No C's now keeping the players at bay for the Thieves, falling back towards the waterfall. You're just trying to do the damage at this point. 
It's looking pretty good here for G2 to convert their 11th round. Again, trying to come back into this left. game, trying to get their first victory oh. against 100 Thieves oh. on this stage in this year of the Americas. And starting off quite well. It's, it's only a matter of time right now for the last two players to fall for 100 Thieves. As you see the last player moving through from G2. The footsteps at least is going to call the audio for his teammates. There's that backstab for the first kill. Could call out the audible that EU is running up towards the wood. And that will force a double swing out from G2 as EU survives with 9 HP. Yeah. And there's the continuous backstab by Jonah P. And this is looking really good for G2 on their first map. Man, the class is in session with the professor right now. 23 and 6 for Jonah P. Absolutely crushing right now. A nice try by EU here, but it's not going to be enough. Nice. Let's go. Let's go. Professor P, Dr. P. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing P. Yeah. Yeah. That's an old meme. Is that still relevant? Pause for 100 thieves. I don't know. Well, they might maybe. What are you going to ask? Odin for leave here, so they start getting some spam on that attack side in. He used damage, oh, and they were trying oh to fight for the Oh, what a wall bang there from Balin. All the counter sprays coming out from G2, and there's no chance for 100 Thieves to really set up here for the control towards Rubble. My ultimate is ready. This wow. is surgical right now for G2. 100 Thieves looking much different than he did against Sentinels yesterday. But it's more in the preparation of G2 coming into this series so far that shows their dominance. Now at map point. And they're, they're a team that knows what the pressure is, right? At Shanghai, we know exactly what they need to do to push themselves forward. And even in these moments, seeing 100 Thieves in the way they played yesterday, it doesn't even look like G2. Well, they took it into consideration, but they're not worried about it. Playing their own game today and absolutely shellacking 100 Thieves here on Lotus. This is crazy from what we expected. 12 to 5 here as we get into round 18. As G2 look to put the finishing touches on map 1 as we dive into Abyss next. See what they can get here as they push out. It's yeah. this focus on the orb, the focus on C, basically all game. And they're gonna try to get into site immediately. G2 wants to close it right now. Austin also oh picked off here by Icy, and they have all the utilities to work with here on the, for the take and for the pulse plan. And it's not even needed. The lockdown was always available, but it's just G2 running in for the kills. Now the pick comes out, making it a lot more difficult now for EU and Busio to try to come back and save the round for the Thieves. He'll definitely know and hear it soon. The lockdown should be coming out to secure the round. It just depends now on what EU and Boost you are going to try to do when they have no utility run. to work with. And there's that haunt. Gives away EU's oh, position and somehow God. lands that headshot onto Icy. And that's a good pick, though, because that's a nightfall to get more information. Boost you then with a second one up to Trent, but that lockdown is still out there. That's going to run the clock down even more. Down to a two versus three. Valence low in HP. That's trying to move back here, hit by the nightfall. But things are looking too good now for G2 as EU is trying to close in the gap. Jonah P still holding his ground. Nana Swarm in coming in to delay even the defuse on that spike. And that's going to be a nail in the coffin. G2 crushes Hunter Thieves on the first map. An absurd showing from G2 in a playoff form that you want to see if you're a G2 fan or G2 player. That is exactly what you need to be doing here against teams that uh, the fans and everybody thinks that it's just going to be crushing. They silence 100 Thieves on Lotus without a problem. And we're going to be getting Abyss next. And what a game from Jonah P. 24 and 7 across the board. The defensive calls from Valen able to keep the map steady the entire time and leave no opening for Bustio to find a way in. Let's have to see what both of these teams have been cooking up now on Abyss as that will be coming after the break. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this.
Red Bull gives you wings.